And now let me show you guys how to work out a special integrating factor as a function of x times y. And we will just write that as mu of x times y. And this is the formula that we got earlier. If you haven't seen that video, please go check that out. And notice that it is possible for us to come up with a special integrating factor in terms of x and y. But be sure that the input here has to be in a really nice form. Otherwise, we cannot come up with a nice formula like this. In our case, we have x times y. It's pretty nice. And this formula is reasonable, right? Okay, so here we have this differential equation. And let me tell you, this is not exact yet. This is almost exact, and it does have a special integrating factor as a function of x times y. So now let's go ahead and do the work. I will first label this as m and label this as n. So the formula says we have to do e to this power and the power since the integral, right? So let's focus on this first. We have to do n sub x, that's the partial of n with respect to x. So look at here and we'll differentiate that with respect to x. We get 1 and the derivative of this is going to be plus 4x y. And then we're going to minus m sub y, we look at that and differentiate that with respect to y. So we get 3 plus 4xy. Okay? And in the denominator, this x is just the variable x. We maintain that x. And then the n is the original function right here. We just bring that down, 3y plus 2xy squared in the parentheses like that. And then we minus, this y is just y, and then the n is this whole thing. We just put that down right here. And now the rest is just to do algebra. And you see that after we cancel things out right here, hopefully, this right here is a function of x, y. And you see, we are, different, we are integrating this with respect to x, y. You are looking at that as one input, one variable. If you would like, you can just say x, y is like t. Okay? But anyways, that's it. You see, you distribute the negative inside, and then you distribute the x in the front, and then the negative y, and this is what we have. right? So just do the algebra. And then the nice thing right here is that since do cancel out. You see that we have the positive 4xy and then the negative 4xy cancel each other out. And in the denominator, the positive 2x squared y squared, and this is minus, right? So they cancel out as well. On the top, we can combine like terms. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. 3 minus 1, right? It's just 2, and then this is the xy term. And of course, we can reduce that. We get negative 1 over xy. And finally, we can integrate. This right here, it is a function in terms of x, y. When we integrate this with respect to x, y, we just get ln x, y, and then the negative, I put it down in the front already. Once again, if you would like, you can just think about this as integral of negative 1 over t dt. In that case, the integral for this is what? Just 1 over, the integral of 1 over t is going to give you ln t, right? Here, we just have x, y. And these two match exactly, so you get ln of x, y. And don't forget the negative right here. And <laughs> this is just the exponent, right? And be sure, in order for you to cancel out the e and the ln, bring the negative to the power, so you have negative 1. And then e and ln will cancel. x, y, instead of the absolute value, and then raised to the negative 1 power, you get 1 over absolute value of x, y. And a lot of people ask me this question, say, uh, should I keep the absolute value or not? How come you can just get rid of the absolute value? The absolute value doesn't matter. Because right here, you are saying that the integrating factor is either positive version of 1 over xy or the negative version of 1 over xy. That's what absolute value does, right? It gives you the plus minus. So let me just give you guys this real quick. It's either the positive version or the negative version. Up to you which one you want to use. Use the positive one. So I'll just say we are going to use mu of xy. Take the positive version, 1 over xy. If you want to use the negative version, the idea is that you take this, multiply everything by that, and you will get negatives. If you would like, divide everything by the negative 1. It's the same as this. So use this is enough. Sometimes you will see people just go from here to here, right? The idea is you just need to use 1, okay? Okay, once we know this is the special integrating factor, I'm going to multiply everything by 1 over xy, which is the same as 
saying let's divide this by x y and let's divide this by x y and let's divide this by x y. After that, you will see the equation will become exact. And now let's erase the board. And now let's finish this. Here we have three y over x y, so we have three over x, and then we add it with. 2xy squared over xy. The 2 stays, the x is cancelled, and then we have y squared over y, which is just y. And this is with dx. And then we add it with x over xy. We have 1 over y. And then we add it with this over that. The 2 stays, x squared over x is x, and then y cancel, and that's what we have. And this is with dy, and this is equal to 0. And here I can promise you guys this equation now is exact. You can go ahead and do the check, but it is exact. And then I can tell you that we know now we have a function and we call that to be capital F. So that this part is the partial of F with respect to X. And right here, this is the partial of F with respect to Y. Start off with either one. Begin here or here. Up to you. I need to figure out what the capital F is, right? So let me put this down. Partial of F with respect to X. This right here is equal to 3 over x plus 2y. I have to figure out the capital F. I'm going to integrate both sides. And for this integration, we have to do it with respect to x. So I put on dx, dx. And then on the left hand side, we'll end up with f. f is a function of xy. Keep that in mind. And on the right hand side, we will have the integral of 3 over x in the x world. It is 3 times ln absolute value of x. And then the integral of 2y in the x world. This is going to be plus 2xy. And usually we put a plus constant, but once again, f is a function of x and y. So y is a constant in the x world. So we are going to add g of y, a function in terms of y. It's considered to be a constant in the x world. So this is what we have. Well, I have to take the derivative of this with respect to y, so I can match with that, right? Let's go ahead and do it. Right here, I will differentiate this with respect to y, and we have to do that on both sides, of course. So on the left-hand side, we will get the partial of f with respect to y, and this is equal to, okay, the derivative of 3ln absolute value of x in the y world is going to be 0, because this is technically a constant, so gone. And we take the derivative of this with respect to y, we will just get 2x. And we differentiate this, we get plus g prime of y. And this is what we have. And now, of course, I have to set this to be the same as what we have right here. This is how the partial of f with respect to y is supposed to be. We set this to be 1 over y plus 2x. And you can see that 2x and 2x match. That means this and that have to be the same. So that means we must have g prime of y equals to 1 over y, and then I can integrate both sides with respect to y, so that I can get this is g of y, which is the ln absolute value of y, and technically I put it on plus constant right here. So this is pretty much it. At the end, I will write down here is the answer. I want to write the answer as capital F as a function of x and y, and notice that I put on comma. Okay. So f of x comma y, this is equal to a constant. On the left hand side, let's go back to the f. We know it's this. So let me put down this is 3. And then we have the ln absolute value of x. And then we plus the 2xy. And then we add it with the g of y, which we found it to be this, right? So that's ln absolute value of y. And I put down plus c1 here. And now say this is equal to a constant. And the deal is that, you know, you can just bring the constant to the right hand side and you just say, hey, let me just say all the constant is on the right hand side and this is what we have. And if you want to end up to have the same answer in the back of the book, right? And this is how to do it. First of all, of course, you can bring the 3 to the exponent like this. So this is ln absolute value of x to the third power. And then let me put this together, right? Plus ln absolute value of y. And then we add it with 2xy is equal to the constant. And then by the log property, we can just multiply the insides together because we're adding, right? So this is the same as ln x to the third power times y. 
And instead of using the absolute value here, you have to remember the solution to a differential equation should be continuous, right? So right here, you want to take the policy side, for example. Don't put down the absolute value. You should put down parentheses. You are assuming that you are taking the positive output of the inside. Okay? So that way that we can be sure that this is going to be continuous. And you add it with 2xy, and this is equal to the constant. And this is how you end up to have the same answer in the back of the book. And that's it.